My name is Emma George and this is my assignment for EDC 1200 Self Education Society for the University of Southern Queensland online mode. The topic I have chosen to focus on is Australia Day and while there are a vast array of different aspects under this flag, pun intended, which could be focused on, it was initially difficult to settle on a single issue within the Australian context. It was not until I was standing in line at a major supermarket recently that a heading in the magazine rack caught my eye. The heading was laid back Australia Day menu and was on the front page of the January 2010 issue of the Australian Gourmet Traveller magazine and of course as they say available at any good bookstore. Upon turning to the Australia Day menu section the reader is greeted by the typical recipes that flag waving, beer swilling, billabong wearing, cricket playing Aussies believe they are associated with. From a cold roast beef fillet to parmesan and rosemary buns, a fancy form of damper, to a roast chicken salad, all presented in the gourmet flavour of the magazine. To me this touches on the notions of difference in the Australian context in two ways. Firstly, the perception of Australians as laid back. Nationwide, Australians tend to view themselves as easygoing and laid back. It is atypically something that is considered to represent Australianness something which has been stereotypically associated with, with what it means to be Aussie. This has been deeply embedded in the Australian culture since colonial times, when convicts were seen as lazy and appears to be part of our legitimising identity. It is part of how Australia is identified in the public imagination and it is what Australians pride themselves in being. As mentioned by Andrew Hickey in the USQ lecture series, Australians typically associate themselves with working class and the image of the battler, when we are actually one of the wealthiest nations in the world. On an international scale, we export Australianness as reflecting characters like Steve Irwin, Crocodile Dundee, Drover from Baz Luhrmann's film Australia, and Lara Bingle from Where the Bloody Hell Are You advertising campaigns. As a community, this ochre nature is generally a myth, although one that we cling on to in the belief that it makes us typically Australian. However, this is not to say that those that do not hold these characteristics should be considered any less Australian. As Andrew Hickey again states in the lectures, nationality is a mostly imagined category. Secondly, the laid back Australia Day menu touches on the notions of difference in the Australian context through the use of typical white working class meal selections. Upon closer examination of the laid back Australia Day menu, it becomes clear that it is being looked at from a white Australian perspective. This acts to group those Australians that eat me meals dissimilar to what is presented as being less Australian, as difference is always relational. This not only acts to alienate diasporic identities, but it also encourages integration, suggesting that to become typically Australian, one should embrace this and similar foods while relinquishing their previous cultures, thus going against Australia's multicultural image. As considered in the USQ lecture series, are you Australian by virtue of just living in the country, or is there something more imagined that makes you Australian? I believe this issue would be appropriate to address with Year 7 through to Year 10. There are several things that students could address in regards to this issue. There would be no right or wrong answers in these sessions and all students should be given the chance and space to discuss his or her own views. As Jennifer Naylor writes in Chapter 11 of Culture and Identity, entitled Understanding Ourselves, there is a need to appreciate and respond to the diversity present among students in our classrooms. Most of this work would be undertaken in small groups and often at this age, Adolescents like to stick to their own social circle, which is not always, always inducive to group work. It may therefore be beneficial to randomly divide the class into groups rather than let students choose their own. Firstly, in groups, students could write down why Australia Day is important to them for their individual identity and what it means for Australia as a national identity or as a country. Some students might like to focus on the belief of Australia as their home, be it temporary or permanent, and how it makes them feel. Keeping in mind Creswell's claim that home is the most important significance-giving factor in human life. Responses can be written on butcher's paper using textures and then hung up around the classroom so that each group can have feedback on what they and others have written. 
Elaborating on this, students could discuss what Australia Day means to those who have newly become Australian citizens. Students would be encouraged to think about those that they believe are similar to themselves, as well as those that have distinct and unlike elements to themselves. This second exercise would be best conducted as a homework exercise. Students should be encouraged to discuss with parents, grandparents, relatives and friends various Australia Day traditions or lack of which they participate in. Students should make note of these and these traditions and celebrations should be discussed in the large classroom group in a following lesson. Care should be taken to ensure that pastimes such as excessive alcohol consumption and other associated activities are not misconstrued as Australian traditions. If this is raised, it would be important as a teacher and role model to discuss the negative connotations associated with drunken behaviour, especially that of underage children. Students should be encouraged to reflect on what traditions they participate in and how this may be seen by other individuals around them. For example, the use of replica Australian flags which are stuck to windows of vehicles and paraded around may be considered acceptable to some and offensive to others. It would be important for students to realise in this lesson that Australia Day means many different things to different people. For example, it is celebrated on the day that white people invaded the land of the Aboriginal peoples and therefore may not be remembered as a positive day or time in their history. As a large class with the use of a world map, students can take it in turns to list and discuss the different types of cultures that exist in Australia and that call themselves Australian. Just going around the class, several cultures may already exist. If the students are finding this task difficult, then as a teacher I may have to start off with a few suggestions or clues. Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander would be a great start to get the students thinking about this topic. This should hopefully instil in students that Australia is full of diversity. Students can now participate in some hands-on learning. Students should be provided with either a wide range of cookbooks or accessing groups to a computer and the internet. They should use their discussions from the previous brainstorming sessions to put together four recipes that they believe should be included in an Australia Day celebration menu, which reflects Australia's multiculturalness. If this task appears too simple, then the main ingredients such as beef and chicken from the laid-back Australia Day menu in the article should be ruled out as unavailable ingredients. In groups, students can present their menu to the class and justify their choices with the class voting on their favourite menu. After the favourite menu has been chosen by the class, in association with the home economics teacher or the hospitality teacher, a hands-on cooking class should be arranged. Students then have the chance to learn to cook a variety of dishes and sample tastes from around the globe. Alternatively, they could collectively put together a multicultural cookbook and using various word processing and presentation software could publish this cookbook to help raise funds for the school. The aim of these lessons is to enable students to have a better understanding of identity in regards to the concept of Australia Day and the many cultures that make up Australia. Students should now be aware that they need to embrace and appreciate different cultures, both in the home and the wider community, and to be aware to avoid discriminatory and exclusive behaviour. Students should now value difference as just that, being different rather than deficit, and find common ground to enable mutual respect of all people. Students should learn to accept and embrace the many different cultures within society. As Tony Rossi states in Culture and Identity Chapter 9, entitled Searching for Australian Identities, we are indeed many, we might even be one, although we often do our best to dispel this. But we are Australians and those that come after us, from wherever, will continue to help define what this means.